Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Mandalorians have a rich history in Star Wars in a lot of different ways. Some of the more notable Mandalorians we've seen have been religious zealots and warriors, while others were famous politicians. Just like a large society, even though Mandalorians were known to be a warrior society on a larger scale, each Mandalorian had their own unique traits and stories. In this episode of Who Is, we'll be taking a look at a Mandalorian built on artistry, warrior-like qualities, and prestige. Who is? Sabine Wren. Now guys, before we start, I want to let you know that Sabine Wren's character arc is covered mainly in the Star Wars Rebels animated series across four seasons. She also makes some appearances in the Star Wars comic book run for the Kanan comic book series. As such, each episode contains numerous stories about Sabine and her adventures. For the purpose of this edition of Who Is, I'll be focusing on the main points of what make up Sabine. If you're interested in all of Sabine's adventures, I highly recommend watching all of Star Wars Rebels from start to finish. Sabine Wren was born on the planet Mandalore to Ursa and Ulrich Wren on 21 BBY, for context one year after the beginning of the Clone Wars. Both those persons I mentioned come from a powerful lineage, the Wren Clan. For context, Clan Wren served as a vassal for House Vizsla, one of the original clans of Mandalorian society. When you think of House Vizsla, you can think of a powerful family line that has held extreme political power throughout their history. Most notably in Star Wars, Tar Vizsla created the Darksaber and became a Jedi, starting a period of leadership that would echo throughout the hearts of all Mandalorians throughout their entire history. And as such, Clan Wren in many ways served with and for House Vizsla, but more prominently in political and military partnerships. Despite growing up Mandalorian, Sabine was very much in tune with her line and proud of it. She still considered her ancestral homeworld to be Cronest, which was the homeworld to Clan Wren. Sabine, being raised in a classic Mandalorian lineage, forged her armor, and in forging her armor, drew much of her influence from her father Ulrich, who is an artist. Sabine's life would change forever, as many others would. It was during her adolescence that the universe was in a state of major change. The Republic had fallen into the clutches of a dictator known as Palpatine or the Jedi betrayed the Republic and Chancellor Palpatine, with his cunning, took control and ended the war, defeating the Jedi and the CIS. Two different truths held by many different people. Sabine though, like many other Mandalorian youths at the time, entered into the Imperial Academy in Mandalore after the fall of the Republic, buying to the message of a good empire. After her initial indoctrination, Sabine would go on to become a model cadet, following orders and producing equipment much needed by the Empire. During her time at the Imperial Academy, Sabine also used her study time to delve into many different topics that were controversial in nature. The material that affected her the most came in the form of the abuses of the Empire on the Innocents. Still, Sabine would work for the Empire, creating a weapon design called the Arc Pulse Generator, more commonly known as the Duchess. In her studies and work for the Empire, Sabine would begin to see the problems of the Empire, slowly driving her to have opinions that were unpopular and contrary to the masses. As she strayed further from the Empire, she began to gamble with the consequences that would shift her path forever. With time, Sabine was banished from her clan and home due to the nature of her beliefs. This banishing saw clear lines drawn, where her family remained on the side of the Empire and Sabine would be on the other side of the unknown from Imperial Clutches. Though this wasn't without consequence, as her father would become imprisoned as a result of this, her mother would remain loyal to the Empire with no choice and her brother, just like herself, was forced into Imperial service. After deserting the Empire, Sabine would go on to partake in bounty hunting for a time, but it was not too long after that that Sabine would eventually find herself in the Roots of Rebellion. Around five years before the Battle of Yavin, Sabine would encounter and join a rebel cell that would famously become known as the Ghost Crew, with the likes that most cells didn't possess. Of them were Jedi Knight Kanan Jarrus, Padawan Ezra Bridger, Harrison Dula, rebel cell and skilled pilot, Lasat warrior Zeb Aurelios, and the world's possibly deadliest and friendliest droid in C-110P, aka Chopper. For Sabine, the Ghost crew became more than just co-workers, they'd become family. Their mission is mainly compromised of stealing important weapons, or otherwise dismantling the Empire in systematic ways. Most notably, their missions in some would not only simply spark the rebellion against the Empire, but would truly be one of the important cogs that began a large chain reaction among the masses. This is particularly evidence in their mission on the Lothal, where they successfully overwrote propaganda, broadcasting the truth to many. Notably, Sabine added some personal taste to these missions, even adding artistry to stolen TIE Fighters, something we've never seen anyone do before, and I suppose a little reminiscent of the clone troopers' miniature art on their vehicles during that time. However, during her missions, Sabine also encountered tragedy on a more personal level. 
During her escape from the Empire, she befriended Jannard, a man who helped her in desertion. Later on, after discovering his inevitable capture by the Empire, Sabine set out to find and save him, only to come just close enough, but also close enough that she see him die in her arms after taking fire from stormtroopers. Now, as mentioned before, Sabine took part in hundreds of missions. The most notable ones that stood out in regards to Sabine as a person dealt with her return home to Mandalore, her body being possessed by the Night Sisters, and her trials with the Darksaber. Her initial return to Mandalorian space came when the Rebel Cells were in need of new routes that would help evade the Empire. The primary suggestion for a new route came in the form of the Concord Dawn system, a Mandalorian space seemingly free of Imperial clutches. During the missions, Sabine, among others, are captured by Fenerao, a Mandalorian in favor of the Empire who was tasked with guarding that space. Ultimately, the Rebels actually caught Fenerao, captured him, and managed to befriend him on uneasy terms. This friendship would lead to them having access to this route. At some point, Sabim would come into contact with the Darksaber as well through Darth Maul. As you may have known, the storied saber has been passed down for many generations, but at this particular juncture in the Star Wars timeline, the saber changed hands several times and now from Maul to Sabine. Sabine was able to retrieve the saber on Dathomir when she was possessed by the Night Sisters after following Maul and Ezra to Dathomir. After the possession concluded, she took the saber with her as she knew its power and meaning to the Mandalorian people. However, Sabine was reluctant to take on the saber due to her family history and desertion of Mandalore. She didn't feel she could bear the weight and deal with the implications of wielding the heralded weapon. However, she was convinced by the ghost crew in Fen Rao that a Mandalorian wielding the saber could convince others to join the rebellious cause against the Empire. And though still reluctant, Kanan brought out Sabine's fears and regrets and ultimately turned those weaknesses into the strength to wield the saber. It was not too long after that that Sabine would take this weapon and visions of hope to the Ren clan homeworld of Norris again. There, Sabine would counter her mother once again, who was still allied with the Empire and was at odds with Sabine over her new cause and the presence of the saber. What Sabine had not known was that while she was gone, Clan Ren's reputation took a sizable hit along with her family. Though they still remain in some sort of political power, Sabine's brother Tristan confirmed to her that the other clans saw her family as treasonous. And sadly, in an effort to maintain their status, Sabine's mother Ursa summoned Mandalorian Viceroy Gar Saxon. Saxon saw prey in his sights and ordered the execution of the entire Ren family, effectively betraying Clan Ren as a whole. However, luckily for Sabine, she was aided by Fen Rao and was able to defeat Saxon and his soldiers. With Sabine and her family having bonded again over the defeat of Gar Saxon, Sabine remained behind for some time to aid her family and brace for the incoming blowback as a result of Saxon's death. But shortly after, Sabine would leave the planet again and aid her rebel friends in the Battle of Adalon, where the Ghost crew was under siege by Thrawn's Seventh Fleet. After aiding once again, she returned again to Mandalorian space to remedy their strife. Her next mission would entail rescuing her father, and this also meant befriending someone that we all know, a Bo-Katan. Bo-Katan actually saved Sabine at a timely note as they continued their missions together to save Sabine's father from execution. Ultimately, the pair were able to save her father, but sadly, the mission entailed the ghosts of her past. During the mission, Sabine encountered disintegrated body armor of several clan warriors. This struck a deep chord with Sabine as she knew exactly what happened. Her brothers and sisters had died at the hands of the Duchess weapon, which she had designed earlier in her life. Sabine, Bo, and friends would ultimately hunt down the weapon with Sabine programming it to target Plastoid armor instead of Beskar. Ultimately, instead of stooping to the lows of murder, Sabine would simply destroy the weapon instead of using it for the purposes of revenge. As Sabine's adventures would go on, she would unfortunately lose her friend Kanan Jarrus as he sacrificed himself for the Ghost Crew at her dismay. Though she may have not known Kanan for a long time, Kanan trained Sabine with the Darksaber and they became close friends and even family during their time. It was another heavy loss that the young Sabine would experience in her adventures, she'd also experienced the Force in different ways. Though never a Force wielder specifically unlike many others in the show, Sabine was there to experience the Force firsthand many times with Ezra and Kanan giving her great insight into things she had never seen or known before. Sabine was even made aware of the world between worlds and used her artistic cunning to figure out information about the portals unbeknownst to others. Sabine would go on to experience some losses and some victories that would leave her with new missions. After repelling the Empire from Lothal with the Ghost Crew, Ezra Bridger would disappear into the deep reaches of space, ultimately unknown to everyone. As time passes and the Empire falls, an older Sabine and Ahsoka embark on a mission together to find their lost friend and Ezra Bridger. So everyone, thanks for watching. As you can see, this episode of Who Is was definitely on the longer side. And as mentioned before, if you want to know about all the nooks and crannies of Sabine's story, 
please go watch Star Wars Rebels in its completion. From time to time, I'll be doing the occasional Sabine video just to talk about some interesting stories or adventures she may have been on. Sabine is definitely one of my favorite characters, and in my opinion, I think she truly embodies what the future of Star Wars will be. And if this is the case, the future of Star Wars will always be bright. Guys, let me know your thoughts about Sabine Wren. I'd love to know them. If you like my video, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And remember, until the next time, the Force will be with you, always.